Hello, I'm Pastor Dale Baumler, uh, Christ Lutheran Church. I'm the visitation pastor. Today we want to look at uh, some words from Paul in 2 Thessalonians 2. He tells these people that he's thankful for them and why he's thankful. And then he tells them what to do in a very simple statement. Give me the freedom, please, to uh, insert something in there that's not in the text doesn't change any meaning whatsoever but i'm going to apply it to the members of christ and just put that in there instead of the generic words that he was using brothers and sisters but we ought always to thank god for you members of christ loved by the lord because god shows you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. He called you to this through our gospel, that you, the members of Christ's congregation, might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. It's interesting, what Paul writes to the Thessalonians applies equally to us. It's as though he's writing these words directly to this congregation, our congregation, today. We're saved in the very same way. He says, God chose us. God chose us out of his mercy and infinite wisdom and his grace. The Holy Spirit has worked in us and has created the faith in the truth and that truth which is found in the gospel so that you and i will share in the glory of our lord jesus christ starting now and never ending in heaven itself but then he goes on after he summarizes their salvation and says I thank God for that. I thank God for the way he saved you and that, that he saved you. He says, so then, brothers and sisters, members of Christ's congregation, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. Stand firm. A word that Jesus uses in Matthew 24, repeated in uh, Mark 13, Stand firm. In those sections of the Gospels, there he's telling everybody, he's telling us what the condition of the world is going to be, and it's not pretty. As we wind down toward his return, it's going to get worse and worse, and when it can't get any worse, it will get worse. And he says, as a Christian, as a child of God in Jesus Christ, stand firm firm because from the Thessalonians to us and every Christian in between the life of a Christian is a challenge he likens it to a war a battle and we are the soldiers fighting against Satan against sin against everything that is anti-Christ and we must endure we must stand firm Needless to say, this is a time of anxiety, just as Jesus predicted. We are in the midst of an election. And one of the things we can honestly say, regardless how we feel politically, it's been a, an election of fear. You look at an ad for one party, one person, vote for me, otherwise great, terrible things are going to happen. The other side says, vote for me, and he'll say this for the same reason. Instilling fear into almost everything that is being presented to us. Well, we don't, don't need political ads to see what we're living in. We turn the TV set on, just the news. COVID, riots, fires, attacks on the faith in very subtle ways and not so subtle ways. Paul says, Stand firm.
But this is the interesting part. Not in something new or someone new. Don't go searching for a solution that you don't yet have. His statement of standing firm is anchored in what is not new, but what is already established. Might we say old? It's what got us here in the first place. Stand firm in the truth revealed in and through the gospel. Stand firm in what we have been already taught. Think of Paul. In all his letters, and even to the letters like Thessalonica, he was with them, then he wrote a letter to them, and he wrote a second letter. He didn't change any of his teachings. He didn't say, oh, I got a new idea, I got a new revelation. He might have enlarged and clarified something, but it wasn't new. Just think of something as simple as John 3.16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's never changed. It never will. It's that simple. And this, a good share of us have been taught on the laps of our mothers. And that truth still comforts us and is what Paul wants us to stand firm in. Stand firm in the word of Christ, the word about Christ, the word from Christ. As I was going through this, something kept just always, from almost the first moment I started on this, I started singing a hymn. And I could not get it out of my mind. And it's a 250-year-old hymn. We don't even know who wrote it. But I kept saying to myself, that's exactly what Paul said. What God is telling us through him, and it's summarized with how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than unto you he has said, who unto the Savior for refuge have fled. Heavenly Father, may your ever-present truth revealed in and through the gospel, which never changes, may it sustain us body, soul, and spirit until you call us home to Jesus Christ. Amen.